Hello everyone, this episode is a little different than the other ones because it's not something that most of us that keep low tech tanks care about. So if someone decides to establish a low tech tank, they will not really think about supplementing with carbon dioxide because that principle behind it. It's like thinking that the tank will do without it. However, this is not the case. You need a carbon dioxide source. So where can you get it from? So let's begin. What is carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is a gas. It is pretty much the end product of every metabolic process that results in sustaining life. Organisms are pretty much like chemical factories that burn molecules in a controlled manner. By controlling the burning of such compounds, energy is stored in different forms, mostly in ATP, providing the cells the energy they need whenever they need it. So the chemical reaction of burning is simple. Here's the chemical reaction of burning organic molecules. This means that any organic compound can be burned with oxygen, which is provided in order to produce carbon dioxide. So if there is life in oxygen, there will be carbon dioxide. So why do we need carbon dioxide in our tanks? This is mostly because carbon dioxide is what plants feed on. Plants take up carbon dioxide and put it back together to form organic molecules. Plants will either take carbon dioxide in its gas form or in its anion form, since carbon dioxide reacts with water and behaves as an acid according to this reaction. In order for plants to form organic molecules from carbon dioxide, they need some form of energy because this whole process is energy consuming. Plants use the energy provided by light. This is the process of photosynthesis and the chemical reaction is the following. As you can see, plants will synthesize sugars from inorganic matter and it will give off oxygen too. I think now you can see how plants and fish are in a constant dynamic balance. Animals will feed on plants, then the animals will die, and eventually the plants will feed on decomposed matter. So this is the principle behind closed systems, like our low-tech aquariums. Of course, some matter escapes with a form of volatile compounds, such as nitrogen gas, methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, and so on. This is also compensated with food that we have to add in our tanks on a constant basis. I think now you're getting the grasp why we need some carbon dioxide. It's plant food, and plants keep our tanks alive. They help clear up decomposing matter and neutralize toxic nitrogen compounds such as ammonia, ammonium, nitrates, and nitrates. So why is carbon dioxide a problem with freshwater tanks? And why have we developed these not so cheap external carbon dioxide systems? The answer is pretty simple. Carbon dioxide cannot diffuse efficiently from the atmosphere in the water and reach the plants' as leaves. So, since carbon dioxide cannot enter the aquarium from the surface, it has to come from within from the substrate, for instance. So before we go on and explain why carbon dioxide is a problem with freshwater tanks, take some time, subscribe, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and turn notifications on so you don't lose a thing. So what happens in lakes is that organic matter precipitates to the bottom of the lake. This could be bacteria, poop, or any dead organisms, dead leaves. So 
there are some organisms that will feed on precipitated organic matter and break it down into even more simple molecules. These molecules will be carbon dioxide, methane, alcohols, acetic acid, and so on. These molecules can then break down into more simple material, and the last byproduct is eventually carbon dioxide. So I think you see where I'm going with it, right? The debris and the fish poop and all the ugly gunk that sits on the bottom of your tank is your constant supply of carbon dioxide. This is why you shouldn't vacuum the bottom of the tank, except in some extreme cases. All the matter that precipitates day by day and week by week and year by year is your fertilizer. Do not worry so much about decaying matter that will foul your water. If you have enough scavengers and your tank is clearly balanced, they will take care of it. Think of them as mediators that control and slow down the decaying process. For example, let's say you had a small fish that died. You did not see it and it's rotting in the bottom of the tank. If you do not have any scavengers, you need to remove it because it will give off a lot of ammonia and probably cause more harm than good. If however you have a good amount of snails and shrimps, then the dead fish may be gone in a couple of hours. This means that all the toxic ammonia will remain in the amino acids and will be used up. So scavengers are like vessels that slow down the decaying process. And decaying matter means a constant supply of carbon dioxide. Now, you would want to be using dirt because it has some organic material within it and it will give you a steady growth of the plants until all decomposition takes place. I have seen many people claiming that their dirted tanks were fine for a year or two just until the substrate gave up. If you have a good plant growth, then you can surely feed a lot more so that your plants will have a constant supply of carbon dioxide, macro and micronutrients. It's rather simple though it might seem scary to leave all the poop on the substrate. Do not worry about it. Soon enough, it will break down into yummy plant food. Now, this is a natural approach and there are some drawbacks. The amount of carbon dioxide released is not enough for some plants and you have to keep the water changes at minimum because water itself is full of solubilized organic matter. This means that other organic material will build up that inhibits plant growth among different or even the same species of plants. It also means that you might never be able to have the scape of your dreams just because some plants and species are not compatible with each other. Another thing that I want to talk about is surface agitation and air stones. Now, vigorous surface agitations, air stones, and trickle wet dry filters will oxygenate the water. This means that oxygen is added in the water while carbon dioxide is displaced. So, if you want to test it, just get a soda can. Pour the content in two different glasses and mix one of them vigorously for a couple of minutes. You will see that most of the fizz in the mixed cup is gone. That's what happens with water agitation as well. If you want to increase the carbon dioxide's availability to your plants, you need a steady water circulation with the least possible agitation. Now I'm not talking about the cases where you have a very large biofilm buildup. If you think your biofilm is getting very thick, it's fine to break it and add some agitation. Although I have to say that with my tank, I had, um, let's say, biofilm for a couple of days and now it's all gone. 
So you might think that your fish will be in danger if too much carbon dioxide accumulates. And that's right. That's why you should always check for signs of distress such as labored or rapid breathing, mostly in the morning, since carbon dioxide is at its highest levels where oxygen is at its lowest. This can easily be countered by stocking your tanks lighter. So, how do we add carbon dioxide in low-tech tanks? Follow these three simple steps. Do not clean the substrate, keep water changes to a minimum, and feed adequately. Guys, I think I have you covered. I hope you enjoyed my video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already.